This poem is part of a series of poems I've done over the past, I don't know, a couple of years where I've been trying to basically memorialize or create elegies for a very specific kind of tragic portion of my life where I, you know, felt that things weren't going well. I was diagnosed with bipolar and ended up in a mental institution for a time. And so it took, you know, 10 years to parse some of those experiences. And that's where this poem, one that appeared in Eriantum and um, some other poems that I've written have come from. No Man Can Serve Two Masters by Gregory Brooks No man can serve two masters, but my diagnosis says otherwise. Depression oozes under my door. The destroying angel visits until I can't get out of bed. One week later, I'm waving bloody hyssop like glow sticks at a rave, nudging sushi on the plate, convinced it might multiply as it rests against a hillside of rice. I stare back at the orderlies who marinate with an interminable silence, eyebrows raised to the square, tally marks on the wall counting how many Jesuses they'd met that morning. Maybe they want me to magnify my calling as a manic depressant. Oh God, where are you? And why does this psych ward have no bishop? Straight jacket orthodoxy, apologetics like soft walls. If they're two masters, two poles, then every fruit grows between them. Plum rage and peach naivete. We must know the bitter, Lehi says, so we can better taste the sweet. He knew the gulf. Euphoria in raw meat. How it felt to be buried, like gold in a barrel of beans. The first thought in my imagined reader would be the question, that really happened? And the answer is kind of, because poems historically exaggerate or stretch the truth to try and find a different or more interesting truth beneath. And in this case, some of the elements are persona, but the emotions are all true. And we live in an age where in the post-confessionalism kind of phase of poetry where um, people demand that um, poems that use the word I be read like nonfiction. But poetry can always be more than that, and it has been. So this is an exercise in personal myth-making as well as it is uh, revealing the experience in my past. Growing up in the D.C. temple, maybe it was envy that churned inside me as I looked around the room, wondering what healthy Mormons felt instead of fear. My body forced everyone to consider what it meant to be sick in such a holy place. Scarlet sins on white carpet, white shoes. I remember the shock of the workers as I prayed for Jesus to return right then and translate me into a parable. A nameless miracle who walked away, touching his stomach in sheepish gratitude. That morning, a green tie had coiled around my Adam's apple. Miles of dark highway chauffeured me to the indent. I swear I saw Satan hurtle past us on the beltway weaving through traffic, exhaust belching silk like an omen, but it was just a guy running late to a construction site. Sipping coffee, blasting Metallica, stay awake.